interesting uh, presentation. And I think that now we go ahead with the second uh, paper in this session, Smart Visual Identities, a Design Challenge for Smart Learning Environments by Katarina Lelis. So yeah. Katarina, take the floor. Uh I did, I did send my presentation and I would rather have it running uh, asynchronously because I am attending another conference. This was a very unfortunate coincidence, but uh, the, the dates were, were falling on the same, the same day and um, I, I have to attend a session in, uh, I mean, five minutes just to say hello, which means I would rather have my video running, the one I sent over. And then I would pop in again to, to our session. Is that okay? Sure thing. We already so do you, that. Yep. Sorry about do that. You want, do you want me to, to put it running? Yes, please. That okay. would be great. Yeah, I'll Good. just have to go there, wave at 10 o'clock, and then I'll, I'll join us again. Perfect. Just, just Thank a second. You. Thank you. Okay, so I will share my screen. Hello everybody, my name is Katerina Lelis. I'm a senior lecturer in brand design and innovation at the University of West London. And my presentation title is Smart Visual Identities, a design challenge for smart learning environments. I would like to start with a summary of the Miss Wara Declaration, especially from its mission, where I found the expression design literacy. And this, this is where, well, when I, I, I identified myself with um, this declaration, its purpose and, and um, the main um, reason for, for its of its relevance. So I do believe that um, in this uh, highly saturated society in visual terms coding and decoding information visually is becoming a survival skill and, and that alone justifies the need for, de put for developing design literacy in all citizens globally namely when the contribution of design to the economy is increasingly valued due to the relevance of design itself and its skills to the so-called fourth uh, industrial so design, and now this is where uh, my main interest is because I am a brand designer, is also an instrument in the development of a brand. And the brand is a promise of quality. And um, many designers for a couple of years now have been really trying out and being inspired by the challenge of transforming data, which is uh, meaningful. Uh, into relevant and um, uh, memorable brand experiences. So the thing here is um, how data has been used by brands in order to create these meaningful experiences is not as, um, as relevant and adequate as we may think. It's not as smart. It doesn't include the smartness concept as defined by uh, the Timisoara Declaration. That is what I found throughout the years of you know, engaging with brands. So two good examples are Uber and Spotify. Uber has been really successful in developing or making available their geographical mapping, routing, uh, and activity data, providing their users with fast and relevant experiences and Spotify with their music recommends that are designed to keep the users engaged and consuming content on the platform and creating their own music libraries on, uh, by using their own accounts is a very good example of hyper-personalization. However, many cases fail in doing so, in using data in a smart kind of way. And it is particularly obvious when it comes to um, giving back to their users data-informed and data-driven interactive results that are guaranteeing that uh, there is a connection between whatever the, the audience is getting and the brand's visual identity or even identity if you want. So the visualization of the information is not always aligned to the brand's identity, basically. That's, that's the, my main message. And I attended this webcast a couple of months ago where 
uh, Craig Wormsley, uh, senior director within the, the publicist group, was saying that um, in the context of how AI will transform digital design, he was saying that there won't be a one fit design version in the future. There will be as many versions of an experience as there are customers and the future is smart and tomorrow. So my problem here was really with the word smart. And I was constantly asking myself, are these data informed and personalization driven brands any smart, such as Spotify and Uber? And um, I really wanted to find what smart really means and why people are using smart for pretty much everything. So what do they mean by smart anyway? And you, if you take the tube in London, you will see the word smart pretty much everywhere in a, any advert. There's smart meters, there's smart such tools for you to identify your perfect home. There's even smart uh, scan features for you to um, identify or return your tax in time automatically. And, uh, and I found that uh, basically uh, the word smart was becoming uh, clear to me when I watched for the third time the movie Her by director Spike Jones. And I found that smart had a very close relationship to the word friend or to being a friend because a friend looks after yourself and a friend contributes with relevant information and uh, it wants you to be knowledgeable, entertains you and includes you at all times, provides you with meaningful experiences, makes your life easier by optimizing it and it is also a very strong tie when it comes to networks and making you um, in, in creating interactions for you. So to me, smart is more than uh, anything, being a friend. Okay, so if we go back to brands, I was looking into brands that would behave as friends. And what I found was that um, the, the, the number of questions were growing. So I was constantly asking new questions, such as how might we have a responsive adaptive brand talking to us? And how might machine evolved branding utilize the brand's identity to create these super optimized experiences to, to their users? And I've found that the brands that have been really sort of engaging with this idea of being friends of their users are the ones that fall under the label dynamic brands or dynamic identities or even flexible identities if you want. There's a couple of definitions, but the one that suits me best is the one that has been proposed by Irene Van Ness, and that includes this sort of six typologies. And um, I'm going to pick the two last cases to show you um, how these uh, brands have been um, helping their friends. So the first one is Archive University. They create these um, logos every year based on their students' um, creation. So this is an art school in Canada and they allow the students to uh, send their own uh, arts and contributions and graphical uh, projects that can be included within the area of the, the larger square. So this is a highly personalized version that each student has of their university brand. And they use it, the university uses these versions at all times, which is quite cool. So this is connected to this entertaining feature that a friend uh, has uh, towards you and the sense of belonging, belonging to someone, belonging to a group. On the other hand, Notkin has a completely different uh, kind of um, um, strategy. This is a, a, a region in the north of Norway, which is really, really cold. And they wanted to attract tourism because the weather that detracts people from going there is also the responsible for the beauty of their landscape and their territory. So what happens in Nordkin is that they really wanted to use the weather conditions as part of their identity and they rebranded their um, brand identity uh, based on that. So using an hexagon, the shape of their logo changes according to the wind direction and the temperature uh, is indicated by the colors that they use. And this is data that they collect uh, in real time from the uh, Norwegian Meteorological Institute, which is um, feeding them with these uh, with this data that is being replicated in their websites, you know, uh, constantly in real time. So this is more informative. This is more providing you with the information you need to make decisions, which is also what friends do for you. They try to optimize your life. 
So smart brands and their identities must be both customizable and computerized because one without the other wouldn't work because that's what you want. You want a full friend. You want a smart friend. Okay. And these are the ones that I, the, the categories that I have identified as the ones that are absolutely essential for a smart brand to be considered smart or a friend. And only if needs be, they can embrace any of the other typologies, usually for graphical reasons, but I'm not going to go into that because that's another presentation. So the objective of my research was, or is, because this is ongoing, to suggest a definition and a classification of smart brands so that these can rightfully represent and deliver the smartness promise of smart ecosystems. And the guiding question for this paper in particular was, how smart can a smart campus visual identity be? So what I did was basically um, my empirical study was uh, based on the analysis of visual artifacts and I looked into seven smart higher education institutions visual identities and the objective was to verify if both categories customizable and computerized from dynamic identities or brands the um, framework were being applied. And also I collected uh, creative outputs from workshops that I organized on university campuses with students from creative backgrounds, from uh, undergraduate, postgraduate, and PhD. So the objective here was to capture the possible avenues for universities' visual identities to be used as smart devices in a way trying to respond to the research question that was um, uh, guiding my, my research. The seven institutions that I looked at were uh, these that you can see here on the slide, and the findings were that none of them had anything to do with the frameworks of dynamic identities. None of them were dynamic in a sort of way. None of them were customizable. None of them are uh, computerized in terms of receiving data that can be used to um, via their visual identity, replicate any sort of relevant information or give back any relevant information. So this was really not happening. The promise that is being delivered by these learning environments is not being replicated by their brands. So this is uh, a bit of a shame. And then on the workshops, I asked these creative people to uh, look at the logos and uh, make of the logos of the institutions visualizing uh, maps, basically, how they would like relevant information to be depicted uh, by the logo itself. So in most illustrated cases, the visual information was very much geolocation related, such as they wanted to the, the logo to represent, um, uh, to give them sort of a compass of, uh, of a within the campus compass by which they would learn the best way for them to go to the next class or uh, the best corridors for them to go to the toilet or the nearest cafe with the shortest queues and so on. And other popular representations included achievements such as marks and deadlines, how to achieve my next, uh, my, my mark, the one that I need to get that sort of, uh, at that sort of level. Um, deadlines for the submission of work or to return books at the library and also the sense of belonging because many students really wanted to see how many country fellows were on campus at the same time because most of my students are international students and then as final remarks I just want to add that um, the existing smart learning environments that I looked at do not communicate through smart brand identity approaches and their promotion of design literacy is not grounded on a systematized or holistic design-based exercise. And I, from what I've seen, there's little design on any of the approaches, on the visual uh, identity approaches. Um, brands and their visual-based language resources can be the leading asset in making the invisible, which is data, visible, namely with the added value that the data being used is unique to each campus, or in this case, brand. Smart visual identities of campuses can be used to dynamically represent the level of smartness of the campus and to help users to have a smarter, a smarter or 
friendlier experience. They could actually integrate campus-related data, such as the university shuttle, with the user-specific needs outside campus. So I'm going to take the shuttle, am I going to use the university shuttle, or am I going to use the TFL, Transport for London uh, resources, because of the timings, the, the, the alternatives here are much more interesting. So they could integrate data coming from other uh, sources, such as, for example, city map. It's also a very good example here in terms of transports. And I'd like to end with my own definition of smart brands, which are those that by integrating both current and potential wishes, interests and needs from their audiences, make use of contextualized data and algorithmic design informed by their own brand identity to produce positive, practical and sustainable impact on people's lives. They are responsible for bringing data back to people, nurturing learning and creative intelligence. And this is me. Thank you very much. I look forward to receiving your thoughts and feedback. Thank you for, uh, for your uh, presentation. I think we are uh, running uh, a bit out of time. Um, Oscar, do you want to make a comment? No, I'm just curious. Hello, Katerina. Actually, Katerina is a, is a colleague and friend from a long time. Well, why didn't you include your university logo in the study? What, 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 my current university? Yes, of course, your current university. <laughs> on, uh, on the, um, the, the, yes, the I noticed seven, the the seven of, higher education institutions. Yes, I noticed University of West London logo wasn't lined up there. <laughs> because they do not consider themselves a smart learning, a, a smart learning environment. Okay, I thought that would bias your research, but most, most probably it would bias your research because it's your students thinking of a logo they supposedly know better. So yeah, it well, probably uh, also buys your research. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. May, may I? Sure. Okay, uh, just a short comment. I mean, uh, uh, well, first of all, I, I don't think that uh, <laughs> the, the, the university that you consider actually, they, they feel themselves as ma uh, very smart. I mean, the, the people that is working there are part of the association, but not, <laughs> not all the universities feel themselves as a smart environment. Anyway, right. I mean, <laughs> this is the first, uh, the first uh, uh, comment. The second comment uh, is that uh, I, I really would like to to see uh, the, the progress of this work because it was very inspiring for uh, uh, for us. I, I'm, I'm working on uh, uh, with uh, school on alternation scheme, and I introduced this year also the concept of uh, smart uh, smart uh, uh, logos uh, due to to the proposal that you have done. So uh, naturally, uh, this just to give you a, a sort of feedback. Well, what's happened is that the students that are not designer at all, they uh, were very uh, involved. They liked a lot to think about the logos. Uh, those logos were created for the smartphone, so for right. app. And, uh, uh, but the, of course, the observation was that uh, the, the, the amount of information should be uh, easily and immediately uh, understandable because otherwise I open the app and I go to into the app to get more information about data. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's all. Yeah. So thanks Anna, for your work. No, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Again, thank you for the presentation. I think we have to move to the next uh, to Thank the you. next one to keep uh, the the time